So um, very much. Thank you very much for your time. So this is our year end report uh, that um, Barb and I are going to give to you. And of course, the uh, agenda would be successes, challenges. And then uh, Barb and I came to across to look at some of the trends and the data that we put together. And we felt it was important to share to you, the board and the superintendent. So um, I'm going to start off with some successes. So what we have noticed over the last year uh, in bullet one, that CCAC uh, is now part of the monthly report to the Board of Education is why we're sitting right here. So very positive. Thank you very much. Uh, parents uh, are working groups are on the working groups to develop um, and developing the, the strategic plan with the special education the strategic, strategic plan um, with the Department of Special Education, sorry. Um, so uh, we, there's some challenges. We spoke to you about that last time, trying to get on that, but that we, we still see that as a win in our eyes and part of the community and part of making that decision. Um, of course, um, that falls down to the CCAC members on policy committees, operating um, budget review committee, school budget review committee, which I was part of, uh, the um, uh, special request to the PTAC president for the special education liaison with uh, PTA, of course, the release of the DMC special education audit information that we reviewed, um, decoding of the D D Dyslexia Maryland presentation, special education attorney and advocate presentation, uh, and then the coordination with HPP, HCPSS DSE for the August CCAC um, sponsorship and fund behavior training for educators. Um, off record, or not off record, but off script here, we also had the um, presentation and, and we gave to the teachers in the award ceremony that we had um, a month or so ago. Um, and then uh, a couple other ones, um, the Maryland, it's not on this, but I can send it to you. Maryland um, parental consent bill that was passed, um, which requires parents to consent to take their students off of the diploma track instead of the school and, the, and just deciding that for the parents. That's very positive. Um, we had the restraint and inclusion that is included in the IEP. And then, and lastly, the Supreme Court decision for the education benefits um, to be more Dismiss. So, thank you. And we move on to the challenges. And surprisingly, I get the challenges. And uh, I don't have, we don't have to go through every single one. Um, we've already discussed the DMC audit and, and that we're, we're going to move on from there. Um, we noticed that uh, Ms. Mallow spoke about the um, dissenting voice on policy committees and how she was concerned about that. And has since special ed parents have not been part of a policy committee before, we are a little concerned about that as well. So we hope you pay attention to that for, on, on our behalf. Um, you know, our, our parent members as well as educators have spoken to CCAC about the, about the tra training that they receive. Um, they've talked about the lack of training that they have for special education and from paraeducators all the way up to general educators, um, as well as the fact that they feel like they need to have some outside training from outside experts. They're getting the same training as what they reiterate to us, same training every year from central office staff, and they feel like they need to have refreshers or folks with more expertise uh, come and train them. Um, some of the job descriptions that are out on the on the Howard County website right now, um, we're a little concerned that we're not seeing a board certified behavior analyst position that's out yet. So we hope you don't forget that. And uh, there's a mental health um, position that's available, and we'd really like to see uh, a BCBA be included as as a benefit at least to to people who are applying as you know listed as a plus. Um, you know, we've we've already talked to you about our concern about resource allocation and special education, and I think CCAC is going to have to work with the board and the superintendent's office to to figure out you know where our money's going to be the best fit for our students. Um, we have members in CCAC from pre-K to um, with students from pre-K to age 21, and our our um, parents who have older children um, have expressed continually that they um, feel that there's a real lack of um, support for transition services for their students who are aging out of the school system. They've had to do a lot of work on their own to find employment and, and even before that to give them an education so that they can be gainfully employed. So we'd like to look at transition services with you in the coming year. Um, we are um, very concerned about the Department of Special Education strategic plan. Um, there are no measurable goals. There's no true parent input in that. Um, no consistent data collection across the school system. 
um, or even long-term goals. Um, we have, and we'll show you later, the, um, a little bit from the MSDE, Special Education Strategic Plan, that um, talks about resources that they have for school districts. And so we'd like to take a look at that and work with MSDE to develop and really start over in HCPSS's strategic plan for special ed. And, um, oh, thanks, Jason. And, and have, I guess, the original strategic plan. We talked about that it was a success that we were included. But one of the things that's important is to have parents and staff members in a room together developing a strategic plan. This was done in two separate meetings. They had staff give their input and parents give their input. And we really feel it's invaluable to have them together and working on a plan together. And by staff, I mean educators, people who are in the classroom who have their concerns and parents <coughs> have their concerns and we work together. Um, it builds collaboration, if nothing else. Um, the strategic plan that we have right now, um, we have its four matrices on the website, and it's um, you know there's one bullet for or one matrix for a continuum of services, and it says to add two ALS classes to um, one school, and that's strategic plan. Um, you know, I find that in Howard County, we put kids in emotional disability programs, or we put them in um, ALS classes. And we look at other school districts and they have twice gifted programs and they have programs for kids with ADHD. We really need to look at continuum of services, um, what others are doing and do best practices. Um, is there anything else I need to talk about this? You know, oh, and having autism, autism experts, that kind of thing that we need to really look at the future and have a long term, have some short term goals, but have some long term goals as well. And that's it. Okay. So if we go to the next one, um, and to give you an example, we, we pulled this down off the MSDE Special Education Strategic Plan, their website. So there's five key strategies, and I'm not going to read them to you because you're all smarter than I am. Um, so, But if you take a look at these, there's no reason why we can't start to leverage them into the local strategic plan. We're not doing that. And if we were to do that, we could start using some of the capacity, some of the capabilities, some of the resources that are within that, whether at state level, that here at the county level, we should be able to do. So I'd, I'd encourage you to look at that um, as well and, and and let's try to leverage those I think that's going to be help us and help special education as well uh, on that same note one of the things that, that strikes me is that they talk about evidence-based practices and data informed decisions and professional learning and and I don't see that in what we're doing I think and you all talked about it on data for the PSAT um, so I think we need to do more of that in Harrah County and then, unfortunately, folks at home can't see all the graphs that we have, but we'd like to move on and talk a little bit about some of these graphs that we've looked at from HCPSS budget books and other places that we've pulled this data from directly. Um, one of the things is the, the trend in the percent of the special ed budget as, as a percent of the total, and it's been decreasing since FY13. Um, and at the same time, we are increasing the special ed students as a percent of total enrollment and decreasing special ed teachers as a percent of total, total teachers. So that mix is not a, good, uh, not a good one. You also have a trend of students moving out of the HCPSS into the non-public types of schools. So if you look at the data, we, and we, we go back all the way from 1998 to 2016, uh, there was obviously a peak in the 2012 era, drop down, uh, I'll call that a data outlier um, for that drop, but it, uh, we significantly start to increase from the 13 to 16 years. Um, for those who don't know that um, Ms. Foos came on from the 12 to 13 years and you see the drop and then the quick incline from there. Uh, so um, your that money could be reallocated. If we could start bringing some of the services that are offered in other school systems into these non-public and we start bringing them here internally, uh, I, I think we could start using the resources, help our community and help our, our children with special needs. The next page is uh, mediation trends that we have. Um, we start at FY11 um, where we have you know a handful of mediation requests by parents who have concerns. Um, a very small percentage of them were declined by the school system in, in 12 and 11, or 11 and 12. Um, but then we see mediation requests increase and the number of times that the school system re refused to mediate um, increased dramatically. In 13, 14, 
It came down a little bit in 15 and a little bit in 16, but we're still concerned about the fact that HCPS has, is refusing to mediate with parents. Um, for those people who don't know, after mediation, if you are still concerned about what's going on, they, and teachers will, and educators have told parents this, if you don't like the services we're providing, you can take us to due process. And due process means going to court, it means hiring a lawyer, it means $50,000 out of the parent's pocket because they're not seeing what their parent, their students are capable of in, in the school system. So we obviously encourage all the parents in, in the school to do mediations or alleviate that because knowing the school budget and knowing that I'm probably like every other parent is counting fifty thousand dollars out of my checking account is going to be difficult to come up with. And the next chart is um, just the number of students that are going to um, non-public schools. Jason um, talked about the, the tuition increases, and, and for those who don't know, it's over seven million dollars that we're spending to send kids to non-public schools, and some kids really need that. But um, contrary to the belief of at least your former attorney, um, parents don't want to put their kid on a bus for an hour, send them to a school that they don't, that their friends and neighbors are not part of, and so. Um, Spending all that money to send them to these places is not what the parents really want. Um, you'll see in the, the graph that we we sent 150 students to non-public schools for a number of years, really from 2001 to about 2010, 2011, and then we've increased it every year after, the, after that. And the the one piece of information that we did get out of the DMC audit was that it said one in three students sent to non-public schools had an emotional disability. And to me that says that our educators are not able to handle behavior issues where we could. And that's why we've been pushing the board certified behavior analysts so much. Because if we avoid the behaviors, these students are very capable of, of excelling in Howard County just like any other student. So I don't mean to rehash it again, but I have another one called legal trends. Um, you can start to see in the graph that we have the actual spend versus the budgeted spend, and you can start to see that difference in the 2014 drop there. So obviously the um, parents um, have significant amount of complaints, and if you look over the further graph and you can start to see that it's increasing 2013, it starts to drop a little bit. but. Um, if you start to look at the 16 to 17, uh, I'm, I'm even wondering what's going to happen in 18. I'm wondering if our trend's going to go up or go down. Don't know this at this point, but um, it, it's something to start to look at. So these, we have a significant amount of complaints. You start to compare that, um, which leads us to the mediation, which leads us to the due process. I, I think we've just got to you know, wrangle this crazy alligator and start to figure out what we're doing. Um, and, and control that because we got to control the money in the county. We got to control those things. We got to control them and help our parents in these situations. Uh, we don't want to go to the due process. I don't think parents want to go to the due process. So, if we could start looking, and I found that into the in the in the school budget um, review committee, uh, in looking at the legal cost and looking at those year over year, it was just astronomical that we were spending our legal cost. So. For people who don't have the graph in front of them, we spent about $100,000 for many years on, on special education legal costs the school system did in taxpayer dollars. In FY14, it went above $300,000, um, even though we had budgeted $100,000. Um, and and um, at least I believe that the drop in the amount that we've spent in special education is because of the aggressiveness of your attorney. And um, we want a more collaborative process. I know you've promised that, and I look forward to that as well. Um, we also on this chart have um, litigation, uh, the people who have filed for due process. Um, we've talked, the, the board has talked to the county council in past years, um, the past couple of years that we've only had a handful, one or two cases that made it to, to full adjudication. Um, but what you haven't been told is the number of filings. Um, and, you know, we had close to 20 in FY13. 16 and 14. So there are parents who are, you know, so frustrated that they are at that point where they're willing to spend $50,000 to try and help their children. Um, we had a little dip in 16, but went back up in 17. Um, I did a MPIA of uh, the Office of Administrative Hearings and found out how many were filings in FY17, and there were 14 cases. And they told me three of those were the school system filing due process against parents. So. Um, that's significant to us as well. Um. Um, last but not least is the uh, budget transfer and the trends. So you can ask a couple of reasons why I joined special education. And one of those is that when my daughter who has special needs, I start to look at the services that she has and what's available to her and realize that money is being transferred out of the budget. Of course, got an uproar. 
I've obviously dealt with budgets in the past. So very simple. Um, I have a little typo. It says FY13, but since FY11 till now, $4.5 million has been moved out of the special education budget to other areas. We could use that money for our children. I can just leave it right there. In so silence. those are our, those are our graphs and our, our successes and challenges. But we want to leave on a positive note that um, thing, we really see the improvements. We have, I think, nine uh, policy committees that our members are part of now. You know, we have a, a, a report to you so you can hear and the community can hear about special education issues. Um, we're very grateful for that. We're grateful for the special education parent liaison that's being advertised right now and reporting directly to you. I think that's important. That's um, and um, we look forward to having somebody who's um, got a, who's a visionary for that position. And uh, we thank you all for your support. Good. Thank you very much. Board members, does anyone have any questions for the? Uh... No? Okay. I don't have a question, but I just want to thank you both for your service to this board, to your community, to the students. Thank, thank you, you very much for all of your work.